Hi, I'm Chris Gravis, the Chief Executive and Founder of Bazan Online. I'm speaking to you today from beautiful Cardiff Bay, where we're based. I'm going to be speaking to you today about computers and the impact that they've had on human thinking. Now, we all know computers are a very good thing. They help us in so many ways. They've helped to advance society in, in a variety of, of, of different situations. Um, they help us to process data. They help us to uh, analyze information. They help us to find information. They make the entire globe accessible. There are just so many benefits in terms of speed, scientific advancements that computers have, have given to us today. But have you ever stopped to think that computers have also had a negative impact on our ability to think. This is the first time in human history where we've started to use computers in almost every aspect of our daily life. We use it at home for our entertainment. We use it in school for our education. We use it in business to help us with our work. But if we don't use the tool correctly, then we're doing ourselves a disservice. Now computers are very left brain instruments. Why? Well, computers are linear, they are number-based, they are focused on words. Quite often there's very few images. People tend to now think and work in word processors. They think and work in databases, in spreadsheets. Even their time is managed in five to ten minute chunks in, in their uh, diary software. So we've actually started limiting our thinking to the confines of the software that we use. Now, if we look back 10 to 20 years ago, that certainly wasn't the case. People had the freedom to, to roam the vast expanses of their brain. They could relax, they could think. Also, when we look at computers, we, we, we have to remember that the brain does not think in toolbars, it does not think in drop-down menus, it does not think in lists, it does not think in buttons. The way that we force ourselves to work on a computer is not natural. It is not the natural way the brain wants to work. In terms of the right brain, the right brain thinker is often thought as the, the imaginative, the creative, the, uh, the daydreamer, the, the, the inventor. That's actually wrong. A right brain thinker um, has very important skills. These skills include rhythm, they include sequence, they include colour, they, they include the, the gestalt, the ability to see the whole picture. But what we actually need as individuals is whole brain thinking. Now my research over the last 10 years has been into uh, modern brain-based learning theory and how that can be combined with, with um, IT uh, and the use of computers. Now the individual that made the most impact on me was a gentleman called Tony Bazan. Now Tony Bazan is the world's leading lecturer on the brain, learning, creativity. He's written more than a hundred books, published in over 150 countries in 35 languages. Uh, he's also the inventor of the process of mind mapping. Mind mapping is so powerful because the process itself engages both sides of the hemisphere to allow you to, to use good thinking skills. And where it, it's particularly powerful is in the fact that it's so simple to use. The reason we created iMindMap was to release people from the confines of uh, the software that they were using. It was to allow people when they work on a computer to work in a way that was um, brain friendly, in a way that would allow them to think in a very generative, uh, generative way. Now, Tony Bazan's process has proved so effective to hundreds of millions of people over the last two decades. It is by far the most used and researched uh, process in, in terms of mind mapping that, that there has ever been. Now, we, we set out to duplicate that process. Now, that's very difficult on a computer. How can you duplicate that, that non-linear thinking process? we saw that there were a variety of other software tools out there that claimed to be mind mapping tools but in fact none of them followed the process and the principles that Tony Bazan's team which is spread all across the world had found to be most effective. Now the reason they hadn't done that was because it was so difficult to do so when I set about um, pulling, to t pulling together a, a team of geniuses over the last couple of years to make this happen um, it was so rewarding for both myself and Tony. It was almost the realization of a dream to actually see a tool that that duplicated the process and ultimately one has to remember it's the process of mind mapping that's powerful not the technology 
It's not the technology that's underlying it. So we wanted to create software that focused on the process and not the technology. Now, why is Tony Bazan's mind mapping process far more powerful than, let's say, concept mapping or flow charting? It's because it mirrors the the non-linear nature of human thought. It is made up of colour, it is made up of imagery, it is made up of curvilinearity. It, it engages both the left and right hemispheres of the brain. It's not analytical, it's not sequential. It can be used for those purposes, but it can be used for so much more. So are computers a good thing? Well, yes, of course they're a good thing. But like any tool, they have to be used in the right way to be effective. Now that you understand that computers force us into left brain thinking, and left brain thinking forces us into a selective thinking process, which is very analytical and sequential, and actually uh, hinders us in our ability to come up and create, and to be innovative and to come up with new ideas, the use of tools that can free you from that, those limits and those confines is so important. The iMindMap tool and the mind mapping process can help you do just that.